Hello and welcome back. Uh, so in this exercise, we're going to look at a uh, problem that deals with the Poisson probability distribution. The Poisson probability distribution is one that uh, allows us to determine the frequency of events occurring within some interval, so within uh, a time interval or a space interval, a distance or something like this. So. Some of the basic characteristics of this distribution are the same as what we've seen before. So we'll just scribble them down here just so that we keep them fresh in our minds. So that is uh, any any probability is non-negative. So it's greater than uh, or at minimum equal to zero. And the sum of all of those probabilities uh, are equal to one. So these are the same as any other probability distribution that we've worked with and will ever work with for that matter. And one that is unique to this distribution, although it's of little value to us at this point, uh, one of these properties of the Poisson distribution is simply that its uh, mean is equal to uh, its variance. Sorry, I'm distracted. I've got my dog here with me again today. Justina, hi. She's just hanging out in the office. Okay, so <laughs> from this uh, information, let me draw you a uh, picture of what our, our distribution looks like. So if I draw, it's like a histogram, right? We've done histograms before, uh, where I have probability uh, of an event occurring on the y-axis, and this is the value, um, some number of events occurring. So for the Poisson distribution, we can't have any negative values within that distribution. I can't calculate the probability of a negative event occurring. It doesn't happen. Uh, it's either nothing happens or something happens. There's no negative uh, occurrences. So there's no values less than zero, either in terms of our, our variable of interest, x, or, of course, the probabilities. Uh, so when we look at you know, where is its mean, it can be anywhere along this x-axis. I'm just picking this point somewhat arbitrarily. Uh, the frequency is highest uh, at that mean value. So the, the value that is likely to occur, the expected value, is the one that's likely to occur with the highest, uh, the highest probability. From that point, as we deviate further out from that mean value, the probability uh, diminishes. So in this case, it's going to diminish down towards zero. We can't have anything negative, uh, and we can't have uh, uh, a negative probability. On the positive side, however, it can actually keep going and going and going. So on that positive side, it could look something like this. Now, it's, it's it, theoretically, it'll never touch that x-axis. We call it a asymptotically approaches the x-axis. Um, so it'll never touch it. It'll never actually equal zero, uh, absolutely. But it will approach zero to you know any number of decimal places. So this is what that distribution looks like, uh, and that satisfies this characteristic of that distribution. This one here, what this one implies is that the area under this curve, so all of this shaded region here, uh, the sum of all of the probabilities uh, equals one. So, and that's of course, you know, that makes it even more important that as we move further and further away, those values are approaching zero because otherwise uh, we will sum to something greater than one. So, so they become effectively zero as we move further out. Now, what can we do with this? Well, let's look at this problem. Uh, here we're looking at lineups at a grocery store or any retail outlet, whatever. Uh, the arrival of customers at the till follow a Poisson distribution because we're looking at a number of customers over some specified period of time. In this case, we calculate the average number of customer arrivals at the till is six every 10 minutes. So at this point, the the size of the interval isn't going to matter. The fact that it's 10 minutes at this point isn't a concern. We'll address that issue when we arrive at part C of this problem. For now, all we need to know is that the mean value is 6. Yes, that's also its variance. We don't really care. So, how can we deal with these problems? Part A. What's the probability of no customers arriving at the till in a 10 minute period? So we need to know, the, we need our formula. And in this case, this formula is 
maybe one of the ugliest ones that you will have seen uh, if you've been following all of the videos in this series of videos. This one's perhaps the least uh, attractive. Uh, this is mu to the power of x times e to the power of negative mu divided by x factorial. So it's a little bit of a different, um, a different function. E, of course, is the constant 2.178. Uh, I don't know how many decimal places. Uh, any rational number, we don't need to worry about its, its value. The calculator will take care of that. And x, of course, is factorial. Uh, you're OK with the factorial functions. I, I expect we've seen it a few times. So for the probability of no customers coming to the till in a 10-minute period, so we're looking at the probability of zero events occurring from a Poisson distribution that has a mean of 6. And so again, that x is 0, e to the negative 6, divided by 0 factorial. And the property of the factorial function is that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Otherwise, we're in trouble. So uh, this is simple enough. The 6 anything raised to the power of 0 of course is 1 e to the negative 6 over 1 so this is just going to be e to the negative 6 so we'll pull out our calculator and here I have I had to press this second function button uh, 6 e to the oh it's negative 6 that'll make a big difference negative 6 so I have a value of 0, 0, 0025 So there's my probability of no customers arriving at the till in any given 10-minute uh, period. So 2.5% chance uh, of nobody arriving at the till in that 10-minute uh, period. Now, for part, so let me just scribble in my answer here, 2.0025. Okay, part B. Part B, we need to take advantage of what I've described over here. Let me clean up some space for us. So part B, compute the probability of two or more customers arriving at the till in a 10 minute period. So how can we calculate that? Well, if we were to think about two or more, it means these are all independent events. So the addition law, you know, we would just be adding these probabilities together. So two or more, it would be the probability of two or three, four, five, and on and on and on. More, it's, there's no end to it. So if we were to look at this distribution that I've described over here, the mean value of six, well, as I described, it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And we want to know, here, let me draw a line right here, let this line represent two, so we want to know the probability of two or more. So that's really everything here. We want to know this area. This black and shaded area represents that probability of interest, two or more. Now, how can we do that? Well, if we have this function, if we consider this function again, what this would mean is I would have to calculate this for 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and on and on and on. And it would get smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to 0. But it would be a heck of a lot of work to have to calculate all of those and then add them together. So what we can do, if what I want is actually just this area or this probability of uh, 2 or... Uh, yeah lose my train of thought. I can calculate this area here because I know this property, This the area under that curve is equal to 1. So if I calculate 1 minus this little piece, so let me just draw this little piece here. So this small little piece, 1 minus that, that's going to be equal to this whole area here. So to calculate this little piece would require I just need to know the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. And then if I simply subtract that 
from 1, well now that will give me this area of interest. Make sense? So let, let's do that and then we'll, we'll see what we get here. So let's, uh, let's write this out. So my f of 1, actually I've already calculated 0, so all we need is 1. So this is going to be 6 to the power of 1, e to the negative 6, over 1 factorial. So 6 to the power of 1, that is going to be equal to 6, uh, e to the negative 6, and this is also 1 factorial is also equal to 1. So let me just punch that into my calculator, wherever I am here. So, 6 times negative uh, 6 e uh, equals 0 0.015. So this is 0 0.015 is our fourth decimal. One, let's call it 149. Let's keep it uh, accurate here, 149. So now to calculate that area of two or more, I need to calculate one minus f of zero and f of one. So this is one minus, here I've calculated f of zero is 0 0.0025 plus f of 1, we just calculated point zero one four nine. So my probability of 2 or more is going to be 1 minus point zero zero two five minus point zero one four nine, and that'll be pretty high probability, point nine eight two six. So here we go, let me clean this up over here. 0 0.9826, so a very high chance, very high probability that I'll have two or more customers coming to the till in a 10 minute period. Okay, compute the probability of no customers coming to the till during a five minute period. So now we have to make an adjustment uh, to our mean, to our interval. And now we have to utilize the fact that the interval width in this case is 10 minutes. And it's a simple uh, adjustment to make. If I have, if my mean is equal to six per 10 minutes, well then my mean is equal to six divided by 10 per minute. So that's equal to 0 0.6 uh, customers per minute. And if I want that to be per five minutes, well then it's 0 0.6 times five per five minutes. And so here our mean is equal to three in that five minute period. So this is where the size of the interval matters. We, we can use that to scale it uh, to any different, any different value uh, that we're interested in. So now the calculation is going to be the same as it was before, where we're looking at the probability associated with zero customers uh, coming to the till. Only now, my mean value is 3. So this is 3 to the 0, uh, e to the negative uh, 3, divided by 0 factorial. So this is 1, and the denominator is 1. And so all I need to calculate here is negative 3 and I have 0 0.0498 0 0.0498 and there we go 0 0.0498 so there we have uh, all of our probabilities now now that we've done this the long way now I can show you the the shorthand way of obtaining all of these probabilities so keep in mind here our our first one, let's look at this one, 0 0.025. This was the probability of no customers uh, coming to the till. And our average value was six. We can now go to our Poisson distribution. Here the notation is a little bit different from what I've been using. This table uses lambda, 
whereas I've been using uh, mu to describe the mean. And x, well, this is the same. Oops, this is our, our value of interest or the number of events occurring. So what we can do here, I can go through this table and identify the distribution that corresponds to my mean of interest. So we're looking at a distribution with a mean of 6. So I need to scroll down a little ways and I'll find, oh, here's that mean of 6. So this is our distribution that we are interested in. What's the probability of zero events, whatever they might be, of zero events occurring from this distribution with a mean of six? Well, here's zero events. Here's that distribution mean of six. Look at that probability, 0 0.0025. Well, that is exactly what we had calculated here. Similarly, let's skip down to this one, 0, 4, 9, uh, 498. So this is obtaining a value of 0 from a distribution uh, with a mean of 3. So if I go back to our Poisson distribution, I want to find the one that corresponds to a mean of 3, and I want to look up nothing, nothing occurring in that distribution with a mean of 3. Look at that value, 0 0.0498 is exactly what we calculated. So now we've got the long-handed way, crunching out these probabilities by hand, but it's also really helpful uh, to get some practice using these probability distribution tables because they can save you a ton of time. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, exceedingly helpful. Bye-bye.